Hi, today I'm going to be talking to you about one of Kellogg's books called The Mysterious Tadpole. The characters in the book include an uncle and a little boy named Lewis. The uncle is from Scotland and he brings Lewis over a little birthday present. It's a tadpole. Lewis is really excited and he puts it in a little container and decides to bring it to school for show and tell. The teacher loves the idea and asks Lewis to bring it back every week to show the class. He names the tadpole Alfonso. So as time progresses throughout the book, Alfonso keeps growing and growing and growing to the point where he's so big that he doesn't fit anywhere in the house anymore. And the teacher asks Lewis not to bring Alfonso to class anymore because he's simply too big. So Lewis is faced with the dilemma of finding somewhere to keep Alfonso. It's summertime and the local high school is out. So because his parents decided that a pool was too expensive to put into their own backyard, he brings Alfonso to the school pool to let him live there. After summer is done, the kids come back from their summer vacation and the swim team jumps into the pool only to be startled by Alfonso. The swim instructor says that Lewis needs to get Alfonso out of there and find a new home for him as soon as possible. So he contacts his friend the librarian who says she has a really great idea. There's a shipwreck out in the ocean near them that has never been discovered. And if Alfonso could fetch one of the golden treasures or treasure chests down there, they'd be able to have enough money to build Alfonso his own pool. So that's what they do and Alfonso makes his way down to the shipwreck and he finds the treasure chest and brings it up. And the little boy Lewis is able to create, or he buys a parking lot and installs a pool in it for his friend Alfonso. And his parents are extra happy at the end because Lewis decides to buy them a trip for a cruise to Hawaii. And at the very end, um, Kellogg leaves us with a bit of a cliffhanger. It's Lewis's birthday again, and his uncle shows up with another egg, and we can see the egg cracking and an animal coming out of it, but we don't know what it is. So it's a little bit of a cliffhanger at the end. There's lots of ways that we can integrate this story uh, into the curriculum. Uh, one of them would be to link it to math. You could have students estimate the mass of the tadpole as he grows throughout the book. So it would be fun to compare and contrast the different estimations that the students come up with about the size of the tadpole as he grows. Another one of integration of knowledge ideas, demonstrating understanding of story elements or topics by applying information gained from illustrations or text features. One of the great things about Kellogg's is he's an incredible artist, and I don't have the book to show you, but if you check out the read-alouds, there's so much information given through his pictures that the students are able to gain a lot of information through them. One of the things that he has on one of the pages that I love is actually a life cycle of the tadpole. So I thought it'd be really fun for the class to write a descriptive narrative about how a tadpole becomes a frog, and we could use the illustrations um, as part of the basis of our narration. Another thing we could do is we could link it to social studies. Students will identify the I Sorry, students can identify the characteristics by talking about the type of community that the uncle lived in. Together, we can infer if it was an urban, suburban, or a rural community, and we can compare it to our own community that we live in. So that's the information I have for you on Kellogg's book of the mysterious tadpole. Thank you.